Perfect. Okay, so welcome to the fourth lecture. So this is where we finish up the uh, main discussion part for the main branch, the first topic, which is basic concepts of IPP. And um, as you guys can see, we went through all the nodes of the tree last week and the week before, so that we have covered up all the main points. Now today, what we'll be discussing is about the hardware, like the basic cons components of a computer system, which is hardware, software, and human operations, as well as the activities of data processing and uh, the storage method and so and so forth. So these two will be discussed in depth today. So we'll start by going through the slides. So uh, first of all, all the videos are uploaded. So if you guys want to track back, you can go through it as well. And at the same time, I will be doing another um, webinar session where I will go through these slides back again and I'll do a new recording so that uh, that particular recording will have some other video elements in it as well. And at the same time, I'll be releasing another video series, which is kind of like a short series, where it will pinpoint most of these um, required data elements or the elements which have been discussed through the IPT A level post or your know, syllabus, so that uh, it will help you as well. And uh, starting from next week, I will be handing over you guys uh, the uh, written PDF document so that you can literally use that as a reference with all the details in it so that you can basically take notes while we are going through the lecture as well. So um, it will be an editable PDF file so that you guys can literally type in or you have the option of requesting a printed document where we can send it and you can start writing on that particular document itself. So, so let's start by going through the input, output and data processing part and we'll go in depth on what what this is. So um, before we go through the overview, just to have a quick refresher about what we did before during our early classes, what we discussed was we discussed the building blocks of um, information. Like we discussed, we had this uh, example where we had the Facebook post where you create a Facebook post and uh, that post has to be, that, that post is treated as data and that data can be converted into information when you add some information to that Facebook post, right? And then um, we discussed about how this uh, data, how you can use the saved data. Api saved kalatiyana data, api kohamadega use karani, api monada use karani, to what purpose we use it, and what are the decision making points and predictions and so on and so forth, what we can do. So we went through multiple points where we discussed about um, the weather balloon and uh, the sea boys and lots of things. So all this information is there in the last week's video, which you can you, you guys can find in my YouTube channel. And uh, there we discussed about different aspects of data and how we use that data to and analyze and continue to process that data. So we data to analyze data and we have to use data to analyze the data and we have to use data to analyze the data. So now today what we talk about is a little bit of technical side. So now we are getting out of this boring theoretical part. Now we are getting into technical point of things where we discuss how and what are these uh, data points and what are the hardware ed elements, hardware, software, and human interactions which we use to go through this, uh, go to like use to capture this data. Okay, so the content we have the overview and we'll discuss these points today. So it will be so these are the exact words and the definition which you guys have in your. A level syllabus. The theme is how it is. Over language syllabus. The theme and the other definitions. The guy terms. The guy. Abhi discuss the. Mom, make a baby. The other one. Karana. What is the hey to deka kudha? I am doing this. This I am following the same syllabus. Due to two reasons. One is then we will be covering up all the modules 
in line as well as you guys will be able to refer everything according to the papers once we start the revision class. So then first point, abstract model of information creation. And then we'll be going through basic components of a computer system. the basic components in PA. We'll go through it because uh, we, there are some specific points which I'll teach you guys. Some interesting things when it comes to the un understanding of a computer system. And then activities of data processing, application of ICT in different domains, as well as impact of IT, ICT in the society. So we'll be going through these points, but um, I think we might have to move about two points to the next lecture because uh, this might take a little bit of bit little bit long, but we'll see how it goes. So starting off, the overview, obviously. So the field of information and communication technology, understanding concepts of input and output data processing is literally crucial. ICT weather, input output and processing key negative come combination. So where when you take a typical application or any sort of an a system based on the principles of ICT, obviously, the idea behind this application or the software or whatever the platform you use, the basic concept is to have an input, output, and while you can input the data, there will be some sort of processing going on, right? So you take the data, process it, you push it out. So whatever we do, when you turn on a PC or when you wake up your phone, everything is related to these three specific points. We'll see how, how we go through it. So first we'll talk about the model of information creation. Now we sell that as an information creation can be Okay. So Computers, no matter how they are programmed, the computer work through input, process, and output. Okay? Api monahari karna, api monahari input te gaad dena. E input te ka listen karang inna computer rehe. E ka process karna, eat a path te computer rehe monahari output te gaad dena. So we basically give an input. They say, I, I want, I, I'm, moving my hand, sorry, I'm moving my mouse with my hand, and when I'm doing this, automatically what happens is, the computer detects that motion, and in return, I can see the cursor moving on the screen, right? So input by moving my hand, process, taking the signal, and converting it from analog to digital, and the output is, I can see the mouse being controlled or mouse being moved on the screen. Simple as that. So we'll see a couple of examples and we'll try to understand what this processing part is, okay? So, model of information creation. So as you guys can see here, so this is a sample video, where you have the input which will be some sort of a activity or in this case it's a product right so we have a ball make a a ball at the end about it we have the processing line so for the processing what is the command so in this case this particular machine is running a command called make it bigger okay so when this processing is done that means the output will be different so you it, you input a ball and since the processing command is there to they are saying to make it bigger then the output will give you a bigger ball okay so that is the simplest example on processing something out so we'll get to another one so let's say you have an input where you input one star into the system and in the processing part, it has the command called double it. They're going to have current. Either as they process to you get two stars at the output. Okay. We'll see another example. 
here we have the thermostat where you control the temperature of a specific room or the temperature of an AC. And then what it does is it takes the reading and it processes the output as turn on or turn off. So when you dial it up, that means when you set as the temperature is high, what it will do is it will automatically turn on the fan. And when the temperature is low, that means it's, it's cold enough and you don't feel the heat. So that means you don't need the fan to be on. So that means the fan will be turned off. Okay. So just feel, think of it as a simple process where whatever the device you use will obviously follow this same principle because it will take some sort of an input, it will process it, and then it will directly give the output. Okay? Simple as that. Then, we'll go through what are the types of input we have. Okay? So, input refers to the data or instruction that is being literally provided to the computer or digital system. Okay? So, this is the specific specific word of the definition because it says it will be either it can be data or it can be some sort of an instruction that are provided to a computer or a digital system. Let's say if you use an air condition, then uh, let's say you want to increase the, uh, sorry, yeah, increase the temperature or increase the fan speed. Then what you will do is you will literally click on the button or you press the button. So in this case, you can see we have a remote. So if I press on one of these buttons, then what will happen is this will emit an IR frequency, infrared frequency, and that will be captured by the IR reader inside the AC itself. So that means we are now here in this case, we are not sending data, right? Here in this case, what we do is when I press this button, this literally process the data. So this small remote has a microcontroller in it where it will process this input, which I click, which I press literally. And then this input will be converted into an instruction which the AC can understand. So that when I click on this, automatically that instruction is sent to the AC and the AC will understand what we are saying. Okay, so that is why we care. we use this term called instruction because otherwise we can use it as data. So it's the information that is fed into the system that will be processed. Right, what we process. And input can come from various sources, such as now, as the example I just showed you, the AC remote, we have different, like multiple different types of inputs we have. The basic inputs we all know are keyboard, mice, touch screen, sensors, or even files and databases where we can connect. And uh, it's like giving commands or providing information to the computer. So, simple as that. Then, the next one. Process. So this is where the interesting thing happens. Process represents the action or operation that the computer or digital system performs on the data to transform in, into something useful or meaningful. Okay. So remember these terms, guys. So these are like the typical. So if you get a question asking what is processing in data, then obviously this is going to be the typical answer where it says process which presents the action or operation that a computer or digital system performs on the input data to transform it into something useful or meaningful. And our transform can be very important because the data process can be transformed. 
Okay. Then it's the stage where the computer thinks and manipulates the input. It's an abitin killer here, it's another my processing part take up the it's a processing part take it away, poker, it is it. Okay. Api Balam, mouse, hardware, connected and a part take a mouse and the kill, then I'm okay. Motherboard take a thing, motherboard take a comma, and again, when we get into that part today, I'll show you guys and I'll show you how these points work work on a motherboard and we'll discuss some uh, points on this as well. Okay. So, the process can involve, involve calculation, sorting, filtering, analyzing, or any other task that the system performs to make sense of the input. Input process can be system check the input. Example like it again, and happy. It done for him that happy. Silver had a you can see for lapping of mother stores and gummy example here. So, in the model, when we go to the mother stores, there's this cade, nobody called the card, learning here. There, and it's over then happy input. Take a moment, we'll discuss what is the what is the base input. So, the base input will be that we ask him to. Give us something. And the So that's the input, right? So when I give that input, Process that take a card code bill. Cade Vedagata Monastery, other than Cade Vedagate. Eagi would be in a hand. I mean, when he repack a tech in the Eagi would be data structure thick Hadila. He has all the data structures in his mind with which either he might have been trained by someone or he might have experience knowing all those things, right? So when we ask to give a bill packet, we give a matter. ऑफ़ a request or you did an input and you got the processing back. Either as they or may I you know where I must question and yeah where I input take a dinner make a key and I then are at a galag ball and make a server or may I you know die either as they where I tell you know I'm not having input take up you get the output again. So think, don't think about computers like having computers. Okay. So when I talk about computers and computing and ICT and all this stuff, what I always use is and what I always try to teach my students is that don't think about computers in a very structured manner. Computer can at the time of the year, 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 the the year, the year, the year, the the year, the year, the year, the the year, the the year, 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 the the Simple as that. Digital system mega e had a whole line in number and yeah, a couple with the way you have in a certain computer zero one zero zero home again. A cade where I can make an at a year me cutting baja. So, as we learned during our previous lessons, sessions, the data can be in different types of mediums, right? So, we can have binary data, we can have digital data as. Well as the sound which is coming out of my mouth, 
that is also data right like as we learned last week where we have the characters and as we store the data and all so this is also a medium which i can transfer some data to your mind okay one make a demo on the then output again so we'll just take a couple of examples so uh, example now number one so you guys know we have the digital camera so in the digital camera what we do is we press the button on top and what the camera does is it captures the image of the button like a press the camera like an image like a capture you know? and then it shows the output on the camera screen so this is like really straightforward but behind the scenes there are a lot of things which which automatically happens where it analyzes it takes the photo it, it anal up we call it allocate the photo and it saves it into the memory chip and then it shows you the saved image but this all happens in like microsecond so that immediately when you click you will tend to see the picture simple as that so then we'll go to another example so this this time we are discussing about a word processor like as similar to let's say microsoft word or this google doc which i am using currently it's also the same thing so when you press the button in the keyboard and this particular button automatically sends the data to the motherboard or to whatever the like for the yeah before we we have the motherboard part in the starting akela ya motherboard like the number but for the moment just think that that is going to be the input and then that particular key input will be processed and then the system then i i identify that which key was being pressed system ekata puluwan identify karana mona key ekata press wuna ekata eeta passe then that particular letter will be added to the memory eke velama save kara save karala onno aata peena output output is visible on the screen okay so i hope the flow is clear that is the basic flow how it works and uh, that is how the input process output works when it comes to the it sorry in a digital system okay so let's get to the next point this is the point where we discuss about the basic components of a computer system so this is like pretty basic but basic and hota na basic ogalan danna thaya abai api ada tika in depth kata ganu so during the lecture we'll go a little bit in depth into hardware software and we'll try to understand what this is and i'll try to teach you guys um, different types of hardware elements as well so that you get can get the broader picture of why we need these type of system so much okay so going forward we'll be discussing about the main three components which is hardware software and human operators in order to have a computer system we need all these three components working seamlessly together so that you can achieve the actual you know, or, or you can get the actual out of output of a computer system me okkoma tike ekata hariyata weda karanne etapoda samaya wata puluwan computer system ekata hari output ekata gan okay so let's see what this is the central processing unit which is also known as the cpu okay so you guys know what this is cpu అంటే కి అండ్ రోడ్ సిపి కి అని మొదలు చేయాలి హైపర్ బోర్డ్ అన్నాడు మన ఆది సిపి కి వెన్ లేగేనే బట్ విల్ గో ఇన్ దే దెన్ వి విల్ ఫైండ్ అవుట్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద డిఫరెంట్ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ సిపియూస్ వి హావ్ ఓకే ఐ యామ్ ఐ డోంట్ హావ్ దోస్ థింగ్స్ విజిబుల్ హియర్ సో వాట్ ఐ యామ్ గోయింగ్ టు టీచ్ యు ఇస్ హౌ టు ఫైండ్ దిస్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ అండ్ ఐ విల్ షో యు గైస్ హౌ యు కెన్ సెర్చ్ అండ్ ఫైండ్ ఇట్ యువర్ సెల్ఫ్ యాస్ వెల్ సో when i'm kind of doing the lectures i 
hope now you guys see that the like the way I do it. So what I do is I always show you the path so that you guys can follow it. I don't literally give you the exact points so that uh, it. I'm I'm not going to make it easy for you. I'm just going to show you the available paths. Okay, so we'll see what this dental processing unit is. PP. So let's open up Google type Google and search as uh PPU type. Okay. When you search as PPU type, it will literally give you some ex explain explanation website as well as it will give you some different uh, help you others as well. So normally when you are trying to look for something, I highly recommend go through documents or web pages which was created by Microsoft and also try to find uh, documents and pages which was created by these guys, um, computerstudypoint.com. So these websites are like really good and they go in depth and explain almost all the details and information about a, about what you're literally trying to search. So what is a CPU? So a CPU is literally a set of diodes and set of small, let's say, controllers. Okay. So there are like multiple different types of CPUs. So we have the single core CPU, we have dual core CPUs, we have quad, hexa, octa, and deca. So what this basically says is in a CPU, you have a thing called a core. So I hope you guys all know um dual core quad core i7 quad core and i7 uh you call it hyper threading you will get a huge variety of CPUs. Right? So what it will do is literally so all these numbers and all these gimmicks. Maybe Tina watch an opening at the time. At the length, the end name make it in a power. CPU is in a power. So, CPU is a main processing unit. You can learn on a medical handy. It is CPU, a key, you know, a key, a jacky, CPU, a key, a processing type of the CPU. So, we have multiple different types of CPUs that we get started with. And the CPU have different processing architectures as well. So we will be kept like touching based on some of these architectures when we get into number system, where I will teach you guys how these different architectures differ from each other and how this performance are. Performance is based based on the uh, CPU type, is it? Because you guys can literally learn a lot from going through these videos and trying to understand what this is. And then uh, you guys can get an in-depth idea on what this and how it works. Also, um, to learn the CPU type as well as we have the two different main types of CPUs, which are specified into two different sections or categories called ARM processor and x86 processor. Okay, so I'll explain this in a brief manner as well so that you guys can get a slight idea what this is. So, Api Ahalati, so I hope you, you all must have heard that. Uh, Apple released the M1 and M2 CPUs, right? The fast CPU can get performance Apple is trying to compete with the X86 for the Intel or AMD market. Okay. So ARM is 
a processor type which is designed for mobile processor or mobile device okay so how it works is this um, this whole architecture is created in a way so that it uses extremely low power so and it will help you do a lot of processing but it will consume a tiny bit of power okay we'll just do a slight different comparison and we'll see so here if you look at this i hope you all you all should be it should have heard these names cortex cortex cpus so if you guys are like um Samsung and uh, Samsung or Android brand, then obviously you you guys should have heard this in names called the like based on the different PPU types, so that uh, you have different um, powers which which is defined by this PPU name Cortex A seventeen. So if I get into this one. It says here, so you guys can see that that this is actually I don't know this was actually written yesterday. So apparently they have released a latest latest Cortex version. Okay, and uh, let's say if you go into a typical Samsung phone, if you open up a Samsung phone and if you go down here, you should be able to see the uh, CPU as well. So here in this case, we'll see as the CPU. We have the main camera, so it's in the comms, it's in areas. And where is the CPU? Features, uh, sound, main camera, memory. Yeah, sorry, the platform. So these guys are using another CPU call. So this is again an ARM based CPU, but this is running on the Snapdragon. Eight architecture. So Cortex is one different architecture, and Snapdragon Eight is also another architecture. So uh, the difference is the both of these can process. So I'm not going into the scientific part of this thing, but just to understand the difference, ARM and uh, x86. The main reason behind this is to focus on the power. So here, you guys should be able to see that uh, under Wi-Fi, NFC, camera, video playback. So you can see there's a lot of features which just give you out of the box. And uh, they don't even talk about the power usage that much because it, this is like extremely optimized to go forward with mobile device. So here, you you can see the clock speed the processing power of this is 3.6 3.36 gigahertz as well as uh, it has the uh, dual core ai processors and all these different set of uh, hardware points okay and here it says uh, it will give you up to 25 percent of input performance and 45 percent of bit better power efficiency but in the other way around if we take an uh, intel i9 if you take a if if you take a 10th gen latest i9 processor and uh, let's see so this is the launch date in, okay so this particular processor has 10 cores in it, okay 10 actual cores so if we have any gamers, but the gamers like no, no, me, like, like a quarter year, I can I mean, I got a lot. Can I? This is kind of like the best, best of this class to do the gaming part. So if we just go through this, you guys can see that now this has ten cores. I think my cores can be more difficult. But I got a lot of fun. Like, I mean, interesting part. Take a guy, take you guys through it, and we will discuss about the processing part when we get into Python and the programming lecture but now what i wanted to show you was just keep in mind 
here you can see this particular processor requires 125 watts. What takes me with Hippaha Kerama? May process take a Vadakaran, Nikang Vadakaran with her. Again, may process take a other may CPU a Dana Nang. You literally need to put a power supply at least about thousand two hundred watts. So it's like technically having an AC running twenty four seven if you have that piece. If you have a PC with that type of a power supply, you know, then it's similar to having an AC running during the entire time period of that, uh, whenever you, you use that PC for. Okay. Make a garden, you know, Pamsi attack, Pamsi attack, you know, the Ghana theater, look at the USB to MKR, a clutch out of it. Again, a CPU, a very Lanka, a Sunday, a CPU, a very Lanka, 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 a and a case and a power supply will obviously cost you more than one million. VJ card mukut lato nikam nikam machine nigger itara khada na one million pay na ni wali. Okay, but think of think of the power. And then again, this is also a similar CPU, but catering to a different part. So, what do we have in this CPU? In this CPU now, I hope. It you guys got the idea. And the main concept behind the CPU is this basically gives you the processing brain and the instruction handling part so that whatever the input you enter can be processed through this through this particular device. So if we take an M1 processor architecture, you guys can see something like this. So this processor, so this is this is the Mac M1 processor, which is again an ARM-based CPU, ARM architecture based color processor, make it my Another Mac M2 M1 M1 make it you know. The CPU has the same parts of computer thing. So the CPU has a part called the CPU, and there's going to be the GPU. And uh, in this M1 type of processor, there's a neural engine as well. There are two where I process the AI and all the machine learning parts. And then there's going to be a cache, and you have the RAM inside it as well. Okay. So this is again a different architecture where it will help you to process all the inputs and outputs. Okay, I just teased. Mom, what did tease like a current CPU together? So later on, obviously, we can go in depth and discuss about how these things work. So if you guys really, if you are really interested, I can literally take you through and explain you how these uh, dice work as well, but. Um, I know that's something extremely complicated, but yes, that is in something really interesting. Okay, so that's the idea behind the CPU. So we have multiple different types of CPUs, and then these CPUs split into different groups as well. We have the ARM based, we have the x 86 based, and we have different power variations and different components inside these CPUs as well. So hope you guys have a simple idea about what this is okay then going to the next point the ram so ram is the computer short term memory which is also known as the volatile memory so it's like a temporary storage that holds and holds data and instruction by the computer is running okay so how it works is basically it acts as a temporal storage so that you can push in and out data while you have a power source acting. 
මතක තියාගන්න වචනේ එකට කියන්නේ volatile memory කියන. Remember the word it's called volatile memory. Volatile memory in the sense it's it's going to be active only if this is um, if power is there. So okay api ඕගලගේ සිලබස් එක ඔච්චර ඉන් ඩෙප්ත් යන්නේ නැහැ බට් ඇම් ජස්ට් එක්ස්ප්ලේන් යූ ද කෝ පොයින්ට්ස් ඔකේ and then we have storage devices we'll discuss how this go when we get to the other board so we have the storage devices where obviously you guys know that is the computer's long term storage or the long term memory api ඔයගොඩ hard drive එකෙන් කියන SSD කියන so we have the old steam type of the and then we have the latest ssd sorry red drive and all these different types of data and hardware is there and how it works is it will literally store the data in binary form in its memory so i am going to carry on now eka binary walta convert karala binary form eka ya save karaganna yage memory ekey so this is also known as a non volatile storage medium ekane meka mekata current ekak one naha ekko current ekata gahala thiyenne one naha meke store kar haba ram meka aniwaren current ekak thiyenne one ram in order to store something into the random access memory obviously there has to be a power source okay then we have the input devices obviously the keyboard mouse and uh, all the input devices which you can literally use for a computer also we have the option of now then we have the we have wireless devices and so on and so forth any sort of a input device which will send some input into a computer or to a digital device then that can fall under as an input device when you define it so හැමදාම ඉන්පුට් ඩිවයිස් එකක් වෙනවා ස්ටයිලස් එකක් වෙනවා පුළුවන් වීඩියෝ කැමරා එකක් ඇත්තටම ඉන්පුට් ඩිවයිස් එකක් බිකොස් වීඩියෝ කැමරා ඉස් බේස්කලි කැප්චරින් ද ලයිට් සෝ දැට් ඉට් කැන් සේව් දැට් ඉන්ෆර්මේෂන් ඇන්ඩ් ගිව් යු ඇ ප්‍රොපර් අවුට්පුට් රයිට් සෝ ඉට්ස් ද සේම් තින් ඇන්ඩ් දෙන් වි හැව් අවුට්පුට් ඩිවයිසස් අවුට්පුට් ඩිවයිසස් ආ දි ස්ක්‍රීන්ස් මොනිටර්ස් ඔ වට් එවර් ද component plugged into a digital device which will give you an output printer ka output ka display ka output ka sound output ka me headset ka output ka everything is working as an output device so kori raw ba ki lagada karanne ya output ki wada output output ma ne me example ra gatto output device ra gatto so the output devices work in a different way now in this case we have two output devices working synchronously together because we have one bluetooth transmitter which is inside the mac itself inside the computer and this bluetooth transmitter is connected with this one and these two communicate together and when i speak the microphone in the headset captures the sound and it processes everything and then it sends the value over that data stream to the computer and the computer will literally process that and it will convert it and send it to you guys at the same time when you make some sort of a now noise let's say if you turn on your microphone and if you speak then the same thing happens the computer will receive that data through the internet and it will use the bluetooth as an output device which will send the output to my headset and my headset will receive it and there is an internal processing device in this headset where it will process the input and it will uh, output the sound so that i can listen to it okay so that is the typical flow behind this so cpu also one more thing now since i was explaining this now cpus are everywhere okay so we you have cpus on almost all the devices example now if we take this example i um, uh, apple 
um, pod for CPU. So this. So if you check this particular headset out, there there is an internal um that's the uh, let's see if we can find the uh, Apple is the only person who basically boasts about these CPUs because they they highly uh, they highly focus on the power of processing because that literally gives you the edge when it comes to other competitors, like for example, if you take a JBL headset or some sort of a headset not related to Apple, they don't they they don't have any kind of like a specific microcontrollers in them. But what Apple does is Apple then they make their own hardware. They literally create small microcontrollers and they literally put them in to the system. Um, we will try to find out. We will try to find an image. Max. Um, it's called. Oh, the shear. Max. I can't remember where this thing was. Where the other CPU was. They had a. Um, okay. So if you go into this, you might be able to see what this is. Uh, they have a teardown and under the controller, they should, okay, here, yeah. So here, you guys can literally see the CPUs or the chips inside this headset, okay? So you can see these are the controllers. So these are the ARM controllers, see? So, this is the ARM microcontroller. So literally this one, this red color. So you have two microcontrollers in each ear, which will simultaneously process the data. So that is that is how this is being uh, continuously connected with the system. As well as you have, a, you have a 256 MB RAM flash, flash memory as well. So this yellow color one. And then you have the audio converter part, as well as you have the Bluetooth SOC. So the Bluetooth SOC is basically the device or the PPU, which connect through Bluetooth, which will be connecting or helping the, the device to be connected with all the devices or so all the Apple devices. Apple ecosystem make it and CPU selling because uh, if you have multiple Apple devices, you can literally connect this by just turning on the device. The mama may one day phone make on karo, a gala phone make a connect to my headset. Immediately, I can Bluetooth system make a connector so that this basically. Keeps in track which device I use. <laughs> you can make a device that you input to the automatically a device that you Bluetooth through, make it a kind of method of process. Karma. So it, it gives the input to this particular headset, and this headset process that input saying that I'm not going to device that I'm going to use. I'm going to use a device. Okay, so it's still input process and output. But that is how it works. So whatever the device you guys use, it everything can contain these small devices so that it will help you with the input outputs and processing part. So be curious about these things, guys. Go through it and learn learn about these things. So uh, now this i i fix it is actually a website which I really love and follow because they what they do is when something is released before they like take the thing apart what they do is they literally take an x-ray maybe maybe an x-ray maybe device ke x-ray ka gala x-ray ka bala lata mai meha galavan 
<laughs> okay and they have the videos as well so just to show you guys one more thing so if you go back and apple balo men na meka uh apple shooty headphone like uh the latest one the second generation so if you look at this this also has a um second generation what are the guides we have we don't have a full full guide right uh we we'll see if we have a guide for the yeah for two Ah yes, so we have a they are down for airport two. So this is so. I hope people who have used it, you guys know that uh, know the size of this, right? Like, how much the shoot? This is going to be. That's the shoot. Again, within airport day, with the normal umbrella, airport day is when the main thing, the main process, the main thing is CPU, with the normal umbrella, right? Main thing is chip. ചൂട്ടിയാക്ടിക്ടിക്ടിക്ടിക്ടിക്ടിക്ടിക്ടിക്ടിക്ടിക്ടിക്ടിക്ടിക്ടിക്ടിക്ടിക്ടിക്ട
and then uh, here this is another sea view but here also you have huge uh, blocks and here again you can see that there are this uh, heat things placed in a strategic manner right wakari podi kotu ak wahala thiyena e wage me tikat thiyena ai wage tan tikat thiyena me eka gattat me board ekak use top gaming board so it's kind of like extreme gaming board here also you have this small block close down with a heat thing right so all these things are there and make it a shape you know simple board that make it pretty powerful we got you know for the heat sink actually so how does it work and why do you, uh, why do they do it the idea is make a golangi with the best thing to fit in there but just keep in mind that make a hari interesting over the make a meetika then i got the google and then not one of the common the motherboard that get the data ticket transfer in the game okay so a motherboard has two different controlling points one is called the south bridge the other one is called the north bridge api motherboard da me athara me hai kana me ka me ka me hema anik patthara ne hai wenne etakota north bridge ekai south bridge ekai meka uda thiyena meka pallana thiyena han north bridge ekin thamai v shape card ekai cpu sorry ram ekai control karanne me thiyena thiyen thana etara thiyena v j card ekai me uda paata thiyena v j port ekai etara thiyena api hama gannanna cpu port ekai cpu slot ekai then we have the ram yeah so we have the gpu slot we have the cpu slot and the we have and we have the ram slot so this north bridge is actually the responsible of controlling these three input devices then mewat input me mokada den then pj card deken karanne pj card deken input output dekama karanna pj card can break with you data and it will output something cpu we have again that falls under an input output device so you basically give an input to the cpu and the cpu gives you an output and again for the ram that is also kind of like a input output device so you input something it stores and then when you request it it gives you the output right simple just keep these two different words in your mind so we have the north bridge and we have the south bridge north bridge again so i need to control it and then the south bridge is the part where the the controller or the chip where it handles the rest of the thing so it handles the pci slot usb and isa i isa kene ka dan yatte nae ki ithara thibba thaya ita passe id er data card disk and all the legacy port meken thamai okkoma port ekak control kara ඔක සමහරලාට වෙනවා මේ හිතන්න අපි මැෂින් එකේ සමහරලාට USB වැඩ කරන්න තියෙන. එතකොට ආ ගිහිල්ලා බාන ගොඩක් වෙලාට ඒගොල්ලන් කියනවා සවුත් රිජ් එක ඩැමේජ් වෙනවා ඇති අපි ඒක චෙක් කරලා බලමු කියලා. දැන් මේ මේවා වල එහෙම කරන වැඩේ සවුත් රිජ් එකට දානවා හොඳ ලොකු මේ වල සවුත් රිජ් එකට දාලා දෙනවා හොඳ ලොකු මේක. හොඳ ලොකු හීට් සින්ක් එකක් දාලා දෙනවා මොකද මේ සර් මේ තියෙන්නේ නෑ නෝත් normally north bridge එකයි south bridge එකයි ලොකු heat sink දාලා වහනවා මොකද ඔය වෙලාවක තියෙනවනේ VJ card පහක් අය ගන්න පුළුවන් ලොකු board එකක් අහම ඊ basically heat දා ඒක රත්නා ඇහෙන රත් වෙන්න මොකද හේතුව ඒ දෙන්නත් ඒ දෙන්නගේ through තමයි ඔක්කොම data ටික pass වෙන්නේ දැන් මේක ගත්තොත් මේ මේ board එකේ you guys can see that this this particular board can support up to 3 VJ cards right 1 2 3 Three cards, SLI has a lot of support for them now. And you have one, two, three SSDs, M.2 SSDs. That's why we have a storage for now. If you have a RAM slot, you have a RAM slot, you have a CPU slot, you have a PCI slot, you have a PCI slot. I think, uh, how many serial data? I think we have one, two, three. ත්‍රී පීරියඩ් එකේ ඉන්නවා සෝ ඔක්කොම දැන් මේ දැන් මේ ඔක්කොම ටික කන්ට්‍රෝල් කරන්න ඕනේ මෙන්න මේ දෙන්නයි ඒ වදාය වැඩ කරන්න සෝ කීප් දැට් ඉන් මයින් සෝ වි ආ නොට් සපෝස් ටු ගෝ ඉන් ඩෙප්ත් ඔන් දි කම්පොනන්ට්ස් බට් ඔල්සෝ ලර්න් වොට් දිස් ජස්ට් කීප් දැට් ඉන් මයින් ඇන්ඩ් ඉෆ් යු ගෑස් 
want to learn more in depth, just do some research and find out how this works. So we'll get back to the, uh, the slide. The reason I went through this was that so we can understand the next coming part, which is the software. Okay. So now we discussed all the hardware components and we just came through all the points and uh, how it works and all. Now we have the operating system, also known as the OS. So operating system is like, we all know, it's kind of like the boss of your computer. So it manages all the software and controls how your computer works. Right? It provides a user-friendly interface, allows you to run programs and handle tasks like file management, memory allocation, and device control. Mainly examples, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So these three are the main examples. And when it comes to the world of operating systems, what we have is these three different variants. Mac OS 3, Linux 3, other of the other side in the Mac OS. Okay, they're not Unix scale, they're called Unix variation in the Linux scale. A cut, have a check at the Mac OS. Okay, so that is something you should not get uh, confused of. But anyway, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux would be the standard three different operating systems we have. Then we have the application software. So now we know what the operating system is. Operating system starts like this. And then um, it's basically there to handle the system itself. And then on top of the operating system, we will be using different application software, right? So example, we are using the Zoom application software in order to make this call so that we can go through this and we can do the data communication like I said. So what are these type of application software? In simple terms, we have productivity software. So these are tools that help you get stuff done. Example, I had a word. word. A tongue excel, a tongue presentation, or even right? making in the productivity software again is a software which will basically let you get something done, get stuff done. Okay. And then we have the other type of creative software. So creative software is also something useful and basically people use it every day, where it will let you perform or create content, creative content as you wish. Like if you're into art, music, or video editing, creative software is your go-to program. Programs like graphic design software, music production, and video editing all falls under the same category. Okay. Then we have your favorite software category, which is entertainment software. Entertainment in a sense, it will basically, it goes on a vast area of different software where you have, uh, it starts from games, it will go to into main, uh, multimedia players, entertainment software, such as, let's say, a big example, little audio software, like, let's say you install Netflix on your mobile, then that again falls under the category as entertainment software, right? And then every, and then if you take a game, that again falls under the entertainment software category. So whatever the software type which will let you enjoy or which will which let you have fun, then that falls under the entertainment category. And then we have the communication software, which is basically the software which we are using right now, like mm -hmm. Zoom, where it will help us communicate with each other and stay in touch. So what that all the messages and Zoom and whatnot. All these applications fall under the same communication software category. So let's go to the next one. 
Now we get this other type of software. We talked about three different software systems, right? We talked about operating system, software, operating system OS, application software, application uh, second layer, OS Tecatino, OS Teco good application slab, you know? and then we have this thing called system software. So this is also known as firmware. Firmware here me put it typical point taker inside of eight net. So um I'll tell you a good story now. Now actually with all the all these latest operating systems with Windows 10 and Windows 11, Windows 8, Windows 7, or anything, the drivers in a katandari natura. Easter of the Easter again, like 1998. I got my first PC when uh, back in 1996. And uh, from 1996 to let's say around 2005, during that period, until Windows uh, 7 was released, Windows XP similar, Windows Vista, Windows 7 now. Oh, yeah, okay, na kaan. We had a problem. If there I read you a nice story. If there are a no, internet cafe to download karan because we didn't have the internet. Internet in the sense, but we had no dial up internet. So dial up the file like a download can not in a karan the way. If there are no me can you, I mean, I mean, I mean, I so what we do is we we have this internet cafe where they had an internet connection called ISDN. That connection was extremely fast compared to what we have, what we had at home. What we had at home was a big connection download negative kilobyte So if it is a good day. You will have about six kilobytes. So hundred MB download, hundred megabytes download can not get a keyak. Hundred MB, fifty megabytes download can not get a keyak. Ten megabytes can manage fifteen shape, twenty can now. <laughs> so that was like that. So what we had to do was we copy the link. Ek again, yani we did it. We link it email. Kara karna. Eda to the Gmail, Gmail hoy ya. Eda to the Gmail kis matna. Yahoo, Yahoo ya tikra me. Email lega dala we go to a internet cafe and we download it there. The internet cafe sir, the one Windows ninety eight. Okay. So Windows ninety eight had a bad driver or a, had a bad firmware system. Not literally bad. We can't say bad because that that was the latest operating system we had it back then until windows, uh, windows xp came out in early 2000 windows 98 usb 64 mb 128 megabytes usb pen so what we do is um, i email the link and then i go there open up the email and i download it last i can't plug in my pen drive because Windows 98 did not have the required firmware, the drivers, to identify this pen drive. Okay, so what I had to do was I had to take a floppy drive. I know you guys might have not seen what is a floppy drive. It's floppy, uh, floppy disk, floppy disk, it's a floppy disk. Floppy disk, floppy disk. So, So we had floppy disk like this. Floppy disk like this, you know? I think, okay, Karan, I can download the driver, I can use the download driver, I can use the pen, a USB pen, an animation pen, I can use the driver. So you first, you first need to download this driver, and then you copy it to this floppy disk. And I had this floppy disk, wherever I go with the pen drive. Because the pen drive can be look at the pen drive at the right. I was lucky enough to have a get a pen drive down from somebody who came from abroad. So that person brought me a pen drive and still it, it was just 128 megabytes. 
and then atana gihama den arake firmware nathi nisa i had to take the firmware on a floppy drive so that you put the floppy drive in install the firmware and then only you can plug in the pen drive then only the system will recognize the pen drive and open it up okay so that is what firmware is. so when you need hardware to work with other software or other hardware this hardware element needs to have its own software installed in it so firmware is that particular software which which is running under a layer which you guys cannot see now with the uh, up, with all the new updates windows xp it was the windows 6 ta ke lagak ka wa windows 7 na it was the windows 8 ta it was the windows 10 na wa then windows 11 ta so each time every windows update what happened was they started exporting So they started packing in all the firmware into the operating system itself. If any of that happens, then Windows install can happen. You don't need to install any hardware drivers. Install can happen only if you have a VGA card or something. Then obviously you have to install it. But otherwise, you don't have to install anything. Like let's say if it is a pen drive or a mouse, you just need to plug it. That's it. Okay. So the firmware. I hope you guys got the idea about what firmware is. So the firmware is basically the internal hardware layer, which will act as a connection in between your operating system and the hardware system, so that these two work seamlessly. Now we'll get back to this example. When the South Bridge and North Bridge get, they too have their inbuilt. firmware system running as the as inside the motherboard itself so these two firmware will literally identify the hardware and tell your operating system that ah okay there is a vj card plugged in thaggala meha north bridge king wage system ekata kiyena me menna vj card ekak gahala thiyenne menna me menna me ahawal අහවලාගේ අහවලාගේ මොඩල් එකේ කාඩ් එකක් ගහලා තියෙනවා. නැත්තම් RAM එකක් ගත්තාම RAM එක ගත්තාම ටග් ගාලා මේකෙන් කියනවා ආ මෙන්න RAM එක ප්ලග් කරලා තියෙනවා. මේ 4GB RAM එක නැත්තම් 8GB RAM එක නැත්තම් 32GB RAM එක this is the speed. So this this automatically tells the system saying ආ okay there is a RAM plugged in with the capacity 32GB into this first RAM slot. Okay, so that is again part of the firmware. I hope you guys got a complete picture of what this is, and that's the reason I explained you what the North Bridge and the South Bridge, so that it will be easy for you to grasp it now. So this gives you the control about all the systems, and then it basically helps you to handle the. performance optimizing and it will basically help you to maintain the overall health of your computer so hope that clear then we'll get to the next one which is programming software programming software is that you guys have to be to know which is the other coding software which will help you develop or create application or basically build application on your pc itself so this is also known as ide which is the term for integrated development environment or code editor so in our next next uh, next coming lectures i will teach you guys how to use vs code which is uh, the typical code ide which we are going to use throughout entire lecture so all the classes because i don't want you to start coding on notepad i have seen like billions of videos most of sri lankan lecturers as well who ask the students to code on notepad notepad they code kala kawadakka topilatta ilaga level ekata yanna ba and never like with 
since we all have those technology in hand, we'll use a proper IDE so that you guys can literally code as software engineers. And I'll teach you guys easy way to remember things. So, so um, just search for VS Code because uh, we will be using VS Code since this, since this is the free, this is a free platform. I will be using VS Code on almost all the points which I will teach you guys on how to code and how to build application, Python and everything. Even when we are going through data number systems and all, I'll, I'll be still using VS Code to show all the examples. Okay. So just do some background research on this. If you guys don't have this, obviously install it on your machine and uh, keep it ready because we'll be, this is going to be our IDE, Integrated Development Environment for the rest of the lectures. Okay, you have the, all the versions. If you are coming from Windows, you have the Windows. If it is uh, Linux, then you have the Linux. So if it is Mac, then you have the Mac as well. Okay, going back. So that is what is called a programming software. Uh, that is what is called an IDE, which is also falling under the program software category. Then these are these are all about software, and then we have the most important point: users. The user can be done. Computer can be done. Man, cowron, inne pa ekaram madhi kia. Tau tika kala kine samayta mige ayya ham ekola ham karai hi thala. Tamanan ne, tamanan till no, still somebody has to perform an activity or request an activity so that the computer will respond as an output. So, human operators, so this is the, this is the next type which we need. As users, you operate the computer and you give it commands. So, we use the devices such as keyboard, mouse, touch screens, and even voice commands to communicate with the computer. And then, we are the people who tell the computer what to do. Okay? Simple as that. Keep that in mind. And uh, the, that's the most important component when it comes to a computer system. So, when we go in depth or when, when we open that user component, then we have a couple of different types of users. Okay? So, in a computer system, we have the user. Yes, correct. So that will be the user who is using the system or providing data, expecting an output, and he will be the primary user. Abhi business term sering ki na customer, right? So if you take a website, and uh, if you are browsing this website as a user, then we call him as a customer. So if we, I'll take an example. If we take this website as an example, this is an actual product which has been developed by my company. So uh, so now I'm browsing this as a user, right? So now I'm the user, I can see the product. I can click on quick view and I can see the product. I can add them to the cart. Then you guys can see that the item was added to the cart and all are good, but I am the user, right? Also known as the customer. Have I, now I'm going to log in. So if I log into the system, then I'll log in. And I'm then system make a back end log in. Now what happens? Now, since I'm logged into the system, now you, now we can see the back end. We can see all the invoices, products, and stocks, and all these details. Now, what happened was, I logged in as a system administrator. So, user is, in, in a web app terms, user is the front-end user or the customer, and 
the administrator is basically also known as the system administrator who will be using the system behind the scenes. So in this example, you guys can see for under payment, method of ignore two different users are then different types of two different types of users. So we have the administrator and we have the user. So if I go into user space, you will be you can see that there's going to be a set of users. And uh, then if you go into administrators, you can again see there are some administrators as well. Okay, perfect. So the administrator is, uh, again, it's going to be a simple user, right? It, it's going to be a human user, but they get to manage and maintain the computer system. So in this case, administrators will manage and maintain all the products and all the orders. And let's say if you go into products, the manager gets the option to handle the product. Let's say if I want to update one of these products, last day is 125 grams. Make a balloon of it. So it takes a common theory. Can I take a hero now? Let's see how this how this product is there on the website. So if I search for our space, 125 grams. Yeah, so this is the product. Make a product here. And may product take a back in the given me in the maker. Now I am looking at the product as a user, who also known in the also known as the customer in this case, or the maker e-commerce platform and it's a mama in the customer in the career. And from the back end, now I'm the super admin. Front end again in the customer had here, one of them back end again super admin. The super admin had here, matter me, depend on now. I can change the title, I can change the keywords, I can change, I can set the price. So you guys can see the price is 4.1 euros. Matter of the non ethnic gun, the current gun of Pena, you know, comedy in Nathan. So I hope you guys got a clear idea. So that's the role of a system administrator. Whatever the system, whatever the platform or any application, you still need to have an administrator where he will be the person, administrator or administrator, where they will be the people who will control the entire process of the system. Okay? Going on for then we get to the programs. So we discussed about the users, the customers in this case, and the system administrators only in our programs. So these programmers, programmers are basically the people who code, right? So if you are into coding, you can obviously become a programmer. Programmers write instructions in programming languages that tell the computer what to do. Api code deka lehera, code deka compile karna, code deka compile karna. Api in this case, it says this is a web application. We push this to the internet into the server which we are using, and that will literally show or let it let the users interact with the system. So that particular part is being handled by the programmers. It is. Programmers are in the morning with programmers of the other. So they are, they are the people who will build the application. Then we need to have the help desk support, which is also one of the most important things when it comes to a software system or a computer system, because whatever you build should be backed up with the well, backed up with a proper support system. Whatever system mega. It is not a banking system, it is not a bank, it is not a transaction. Due to some reason, the transaction won't go through. It is not a call. It is not a call. It is not a call. It is not a payment. That time you try to reserve something or you try to purchase something. And if, if that does not work, then obviously you need to have a help desk support, right? So, example, I'll show you another website, which is which is also, so this is actually a system which we are maintaining. This is one of the largest insurance companies in the US. 
which is being maintained by our company. So here, you guys can see that we have this small support box. Make a click here, Prahati. We will show you this pop-up. Make a pick Make a Reach out. Reach out to us with any questions or suggestions. So bad. Questions, suggestions, so bad. So it says we are available on weekdays and you should reply within one working day. How are the customer getting market issue? I got that first. Yeah, I'm not going to be lying. I can't know. When I make that cut, make a better run. I need help. Then immediately, one of our support team members will go through that. And we have our international lines as well. We give a call to this customer and we rectify the problem then and there. Okay. So that's the role of a support team. So, oh, also known as the help desk support. For the system, remember, we need all these four different types of users. Users like known as system of our chicken line. Then we have the system administrator who will be updating the backend. System backend the backend system and manage can line. Then we have the programmers who develop the application. Act like a soft code code color, coding learning system. Then we have the help tech support, which will be there on call to handle all the support requests. Monohari Prash Techno, Tagala support tech then support team. Network so on top of all these other people, we have the network administrator. Why do we need a network administrator? The role of a network administrator is actually extremely important because when it comes to server-side applications, or oh, let's say any sort of an application which is based on the internet, then obviously a network administrator should be there so that they will manage all the computer networks and they will be kind of like the guards who will keep the network safe. Example like I did and a network administrator can make a role like a they have the option of people. Like some of the network administrators, they have to deploy the application. Deploy application can be able to install the application. Server can install the Server can deploy the Server can run the Either way, they need to make sure the security is there. Okay, server can endpoint check the security. Then we, they make sure the uptime. Uptime in the sense, uptime here means server ega weather can hurry. Then they have to make sure the code is correctly there and there are no errors. Hadithia there ega kao, ega, ara network administrator of the mind, and maintain karanun, ask me ega kao, make him, when we have a lick in a other key. And then they have to think about the performance of the server. And they have to make sure that the quality and the server is quality or the load of the survey is properly running. When I have example like that, if we if we take a simple server, so I'm I'm just uh, yeah, I just logged into a server. So me go No, no, make a server again, log on a server again. Sites coda. May server again, no sites coda. May server again, I keep it Sri Lanka, Magi, site tagger on. So if I open this up, this is, uh, this is my website. So this is where, you know, on this server, I have this application running as well. Ah, yeah, one more thing, guys. Uh, in this website, ipcfreelanka.com, you just search as Google IPT or something, and uh, you will find all these blog articles which I have created according to the lecture notes. So these blogs contain all the information which we are discussing right now as well. And I will be, I will add the rest of the lessons here as well. So everything will be listed on the A-level lesson section. 
එකක් එනවා ඒක නෙක්ස්ට් වික් විතර වෙනකොට අපි දැනට කරපු ලෙසන්ස් ටිකයි බේසික් ලෙසන්ස් ටිකක් දානවා and i will be starting some courses as well so course information will be listed here as well so just keep an eye on the website also so going back now in this particular website this is running on a running on this particular server so now as a as a network admin you first need to make sure that the server is running on good condition me maavaranda pennanne server ki h top kiyala command ekak me command ekin peenni server ekige danata cpu usage ekak so you guys know how to um, uh, take a look at your task manager on your windows machine right control or delete kiyala task manager ekak ganna nathan task manager right click kiyala task manager ekak ganna nathan it will uh, task manager yo ganna penna no run ena task ekak it will show you all the task which are currently running so this is the task manager on linux machine where this will show you the usage of your pc so here you guys can see that the cpu usage is actually really low it's like almost 0 to 1% but there is a alarming point where you guys can see that the ram is almost 50% ऑलमोस्ट 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 50% 
So we have the data gathering, data validation, modes of data input, data processing, output method, and storage method. So once we go through this, I hope you guys should get a clear idea of what we are looking at and what are the different types of data processing we have. Okay, so let's get to the first point. Come on, data gathering. The data gathering, when it comes to data, uh, this particular component, we discussed uh, during our second le lecture, we discussed a uh, couple of methods of data gathering. I, I told you guys an example where um, we uh, talked about a specific project. We did that uh, at Lux Software where I explained to you guys that we built a form and we had these different problems where people were confused on what to add, how to add data, and so on and so forth. Right? So that was uh, when we discussed how manual methods work. So now we are just going to talk about the technical term or the base term of things so that you guys can get a clear idea what this is. So the manual method is basically you, without using any fancy tools like uh, data readers or anything as such, the manual method is basically just using physical methods of gathering data. So you literally gather data using surveys, questionnaires, interviews, or to gather data from people directly. So this is basically simple, in simple terms, like filling out a form. That is the manual method. Again, that is still, yeah, obviously the data is gathered or the data is saved yeah, inside the video camera or the audio device. But then again, the gathering method is literally manual, right? So then we have the semi-automated and automated methods. So automated methods is basically using a computer system to work for you. And semi automated is basically having the human effort, having the human portion of that as well as having an automated system. So we'll see what this is. Now, last week during our lecture, we discussed and we went through all these uh, different components where we discussed about the weather balloon and where we discussed about the um, the three boys where all these boys were placed at strategic locations around the world. And when the sea current changes, the boy basically transmits a, a signal to the satellite and the satellite automates, automatically distributes that signal, right? So the automatic method is similar to that. So there is no human intervention in it. All the data is automatically collected and it is being gathered by the system itself. Semi-automated can be anything. Semi-automated can be. How are we adagar no? How are we can make? Manuse kehila, human interaction ka kekka. Ya computer ka assist karagi na data ka gather karna. In the same how. Um, if somebody is, uh, let's say, somebody comes to you with a pen and a paper and ask you a question, then that falls under the manual, right? Let's say if somebody comes to you with a, uh, no, if uh, somebody gives you a call, or uh, if somebody uh, gives hands you a tab to write or give an answers on that tab, Tablet PC. Not some phone nigga the Kina, me phone nigga, Nangi Mali, make a poly trash net, make a trash to take a pillow, make a poor old thing. Then you will be using some sort of a technology, but then again, still, it's it's basically a manual method of entering data, right? So then that falls under the semi automated category. And automated is basically the example which we discussed before, 
where everything is interconnected and computer systems will automatically gather data and it will automatically save it. So the best, uh, one of the best examples are the weather, weather balloon. So the weather balloon goes up, it transmits the signal and it automatically gathers all the information and it is being saved. So these two are the primary different types of gathering data, okay? Then we get into a small point, or let's, uh, we can call it as a problem, where validation. So this is also we discussed during our second lecture. If you guys want to go through it again, you can uh, see the video on YouTube. So data validation is again going to be one of the best and one of the most hardest problems to fix because obviously when you input some data into the system, the computer does not understand what this is, right? Computer data key la me me our data set take a key computer that in any more So what it will do is it, it will automatically save that data set. It will not be for the example like a form form a field can put form a telephone field email field and so we keep two different fields as telephone and email. Email like a email like a thing, telephone like a telephone like a the in the key like a enter current key like a well get current, right? So the system should validate if the user has entered an email or if the user has entered a mobile number, right? Without doing that validation, the data will or data can be corrupted, right? The data always has to be exactly validated so that it will know what this exactly is. So data validation and data type check is in a computer session having something like having a smart buddy who will double check your information. It's all about making sure the data you entered is correct and in the right format. Data validation will check for either an inconsistency like making sure you delete a number rather Sorry, making sure you enter the enter a number where a number is expected. For an example, let's put one then if you make a big if you go into the contact form, here in this contact form, we have a contact where it will ask you for the name, email, phone number, and message. And then mama make it mom make a send message we can press curl automatically. System again, validation like a it will say that the first name field is required and the phone number field is required as well as it, it will say the message field is required. This is because in order for you to send a message, in order for you to send a message to me through this contact form, I need you to provide some information, right? Then why am I not a information ticket? Then you're not done. Why am I not a number? I phone number again. Message a good in a tongue. Make a contact form again. You're not getting in. Look at it and matter message. You know, so for my girl, like a class being all that. The Namaku email like a quick Nam Namaka email like a phone number. I cut not the mom card of the reply. And that means that data is inconsistent, right? So that means we need to have the validation. So this is part, this is basically the data validation where we check if these data elements are there in the data set. Google.com. Unadala then put the phone number. Phone number again the Karadi. Then up here, I validation. Then I made the Kadalaman send message. 
send message ka press karo again i am going to get the same error saying phone number field is required since i have not added the phone number now here according to the data type check as you can see here we have the phone number predefined phone number ga check kallama thiyena nithana dala ogalanta pena athi meke binduwai hatai kiyala phone number ekak dilama thiyenne patan ganna kiyala dilama thiyenne mota lankaya numbers okkoma mobile numbers patan ganna binduwai hatenne etokota metana mama den apurak type wena andarne apuru type karanna hadana keyboard ekak apura type karanna ba i am trying to enter a letter but all the letters are blocked so this this is the type validation so i am restricting all the key entries for character if you try to press on it it will never give you an output because that is blocked but if i press a number mama number ekak press karo anna number ekak print karo number ekak enter karo again karan okay then may part explain this work but then again going back to the same system whatever if i enter more than 10 characters the lanka we numbers hadila thiyenne ilakkan 10 ekak inne dan mata one ilakkan 10 ata wada gahana ekak nawathanna because again then that data will be corrupted not inconsistent corrupted because i will have a phone number with 12 characters or 12 numbers that's not going to work right so in order to prevent that you guys can see that the system only takes in a specific number now i am trying to enter a number but you can see that the input field the input field like mava block the input field is blocking me. so at the maximum i can enter is 1 2 3 4 4 5 6 7 sorry 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 ten numbers only ten numbers are allowed so if i cut it uh, try to remove it again and um if i enter another number of 777 1 2 3 four, five, 6 i can't enter anything more than that okay so that's the type validation and the basic validation of a system so this is literally required so that whatever the data points we capture will be captured in a proper way so that we can use that content to save the data set save a proper data set okay now then again go to the next point then we have a the we have the other validation type called process check so the process check in a computer system it's likely having a digital detective that ensures that you don't leave any blank it's simply the validation i showed you guys earlier so if i refresh this and let's if i come back to this page and if i try to send message this is the process check validation where this check if all the data is in intact so it's all about making sure you fill all the necessary information so that the data set will be consistent and complete okay remember those words right? it has to be consistent and it, it it also has to be complete and it's kind of like giving a nudge and asking the user to provide the correct information like as we did here okay so i hope that okay. and then we have the range check range check is again it's kind of like you make a specific limit so then we will this is what i explained you with the number range so here we have a range check where you cannot enter anything anything else or anything more then what is restricted right so it keeps an eye on numbers or values you enter so every time i press on a key the system automatically keeps that to keep keep that in track and then it will not let me go 
more than what is locked or what is fixed in that particular range. Okay. I hope you guys understood the point with the example I showed you. Then we, so that, then we cover up the part with data validation. Then we have the next point, which is modes of data input. So data input system. Data input falls into two different categories. Okay. We have the direct data input and the remote data input modes. But direct data input is basically using a device similar to keyboard or a mouse or a touch screen, where you basically directly push data into the system. So when you use a mouse, immediately when you move the mouse, the data set is the, the system basically receives that data immediately, and then the system will go through it and, and process it, right? On the other hand, remote data is where you send data to your computer from a distance or from a different location. For an example, remote microphones or remote headset. Now, in this case, you can see that uh, we are having a similar remote input system where this microphone in my headset captures the data and it sends remotely through the Bluetooth interface to the system so that the data is being saved. Okay, so it's basically like network connections as, as well as now, example. Now, if I connect to your PC, now in Zoom, I can literally request the connection to your PC or to your computer or to your mobile. So that when you give me the access, I can literally control your computer or your whatever the system through my Zoom. So that means again, that falls under the remote data input as well because your pointer or your mouse will get the data from my system through the internet. Okay, so that's like simply, simply a connection. So that's how we you have the two different types of inputs. And then at the same time, we have the online input and the offline. So online is basically when you are connected to the internet and you basically gather information from website, forms, or other social media, or like, like filling out online surveys or downloading files. So it's basically like getting data online, okay? An offline input is other, otherwise the same thing where you are not connected, but you get the data from physical source, like printed documents or offline applications. It's like writing paper, uh, writing on paper and later entering it into your computer. So it's kind of like active entering and off, uh, sorry, online entering is basically getting the data directly and offline input is basically not directly entering it, but saving it in a different location or in a different medium, and then later on, importing it into the system. Then we finish up the modes of data input. So we discussed about the direct and remote and online and offline. And then we have the data processing part. So now we discussed about all the points, right? We discussed the data gathering part, and then we talked about data validation, where we gather the data, then we validate the data, and then we input the data. So the validated data, data is basically inputted into the system, and now we are going to process it. Okay, now the processing part is there. So when it comes to processing, there are two different primary methods of processing. One is called batch processing, which is when you basically gather a bunch of data as a batch, and then you process it as a batch as well. So that what happens is 
when the computer processes it, it will have a bulk data set so that it can be processed at once. And again, the real time processing is when the data is input, when the data input is received, it will automatically process the data at that particular moment. Okay. Why do we need this? So this is the theory part. Yes, of course, it is, this is all what you guys need to learn in order to give an answer for the exam. But I'll just take you to, just to let you know why we need this. So example, if we take a website, where if we take a photo gallery website, and uh, I'll, I'll take an example, models.lk. So this is uh, this is a modeling platform, which is the which is the modeling platform in Sri Lanka, which is also uh, being also one of my sub companies which I have. So uh, you guys can see. So this is a platform where people can submit their pictures of models and photographers and all. And uh, when it's uh, submitted, you have the option to basically contact people and uh, interact with them so that you can get them for model shoots and all. Anyway, that's the, that's the reason. But now, in this particular application, we had a problem. People started uploading huge chunks of pictures. Okay? So we had a, we had, one time we had a photographer who, start, who uploaded about 50 photos like okay so if you guys know about photography you guys know that when you take a picture from a high-end camera the photo that particular photo file will have a file size of around 5 to 10 megabytes give or take okay so if it is not resized if it is really like a raw image then it can go up to 20 megabytes okay now think if somebody uploads 20 megabyte images, 10, 20 megabyte images into the server, that means this is going to process 200 megabytes of data so that it can resize the images to be displayed on this screen. Example, if you if you take this image, this image is basically saved as in two, two to three different formats. So first format is a smaller picture, and when you click on this, then we have a larger format as well. So this is actually done in order to make sure the page loading speed is fast and uh, the user will have a smooth flow of the system with whatever the uh, pictures you are going to watch, watch with, right? So now, what we did was, we created a batch processing system so that when you upload all the pictures, what the server does is it saves all the pictures into a specific location and it sends it into a batch. So immediately when you upload the picture, it will not be displayed on the profile. What the system does is it will wait until it gets about 10 to 15 pictures and then it will automatically start processing it. So until it is processed, you will not see your pictures, of course. But if your picture size is small, let's say if it is, let's say about two megabytes, then what we do is we use the real time system so that immediately when that file is uploaded, it will be immediately converted. Okay. So that is how we use the real time and the batch. Now the question comes, why we do this? The reason is, now let's say, we'll go back to that 20 megabyte example. If you upload 10, 20 megabyte pictures, that means this is going to take 200 megabytes of space. And in order to process 200 megabytes of images, that is going to require a massive lot of CPU power. 
ඒක process කරන්න CPU එකක් යනවා උතුම CPU power එකක් යනවා මොකද මේ photo එක open කරලා ඒක resize කරලා අපේ logo එක ගහලා මෙතනට ඒක ආයිමත් server එකට upload කරන්න the photo has to be opened it has to be resized this watermark has to be placed and again this has to be uploaded into one of our storage servers ඕක කරන්න මාර වෙලාවක් යනවා හිතන්න දැන් අර ඉමේජ් එක 20 මෙගාවයිට් ඉමේජ් එක ගන්නම් 20 මෙගාවයිට් ඉමේජ් 10ක් process කරන්න උතුම CPU power එකක් යනවා නව when that happen but the problem is when as i showed you before uh, during this uh, htop example few minutes before you guys saw that the cpu usage was really low right what happens if that cpu usage goes up to the maximum then what happens is when you try to browse a web page then up in this site ega so in this site ege mama mage blog ega browse karo i go through the blog you guys can see that it the loading speed is almost instant right that is because the server is oh, server is extremely optimized and you can see that uh, the page is basically loading within millisecond if you take another example like camera lk again the load time would be extremely fast and there's something to do with my internet connection itself okay anyway so that is that is how it works so if we try to utilize most of the server space to get something like that done then obviously what happens is automatically the user experience automatically goes down right so if that happens we are going to lose users and we are going to lose the trust of the user if i open something like this unless if it is some sort of a network problem it this should come in instantly okay so um because of that reason what we do is we push it to a batch and we time it and then we load the page so that the user will not see any differences in the website but the work will be done underneath or the work will be switched into a another session uh then yes yeah, you can get yeah, the recording will be uh, saved and i will share this on uh, youtube so yeah so uh guys we'll we'll go through the slides because we just have few a few more then uh, we can wrap it up today so i hope you guys understood what is real time and batch and then we get into output methods so this is for something quite simple so we have the direct presentation to the user which is basically um like a monitor or listening to your favorite song with your headset or your speakers or it's like playing a video where you can directly see what is the output of the system then the other output method is storage for future processing storing it for future processing so in this case what happens is it will be it will be basically um the same process and when the the computer system stores the output into a file or a database it will allow you to access it again whenever you need it right and it's like bookmarking a web page for saving your document on your computer so that basically what you save is it's being stored in the system itself and then that is for the storing part and then we have the local and remote storage as well so local storage is obviously we all, you guys all know that we have the hard disk hard drive and external drive like usb usb device right where you can save it into a local device and it will be stored with you so when it comes to this uh, type of local devices you have the security as well as you have a risk ega de pattern bala ega security ekak thiyena ega risk ekak thiyena the reason is that in that just think that you have some 
confidential documents you want that to be stored and you have to keep it with you onari hor hor document at dinawa ata kawrori warakan karo tari wede wenne adi eko oya gawa pen eka dala tiya ganna oya gawa wedi paristhama ne habai wede thiyenne tam tamai oy pen eka ekko weda karanna thiya wenna natta e pen eka nathi wenna onna oy wage welawa kari now you are going to get into a big 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 trouble because the data will be will be either the, the data can be corrupted or you will entirely lose the data so it has pros and cons then api the film ekak kehen balana na film ekak download karala hard drive ekak tiya ganna thamai lazy oba the film ekak cloud ekak tiya la api internet access karala ekak karanna bae ne api de kiyana lankawe api internet connection ekak karanna bae but in different countries yes you can so in in sri lanka still we are we we have way more to go with the internet connection far more to go with the internet connection still we cannot like literally directly upload something in the cloud up, uh, connect to something in the cloud so because of that reason having it local is also good the only option we have but um, when it comes to security and all remote storage is also you have an option so just keep in mind that uh, locally storing it you know, in in your local space and cloud storage or remote storage is basically storing it in the cloud then we have the short term and the long term storage short term storage is basically where you temporarily store files so that you can access it frequently okay so like the files you are using right now it's like api eto meha meka long term short term meka lengthy in kiyanna long short term usage kiyanne etho den oba lange paada mese uda podi kola kanla kawa monawaya liyala thi anne eka short term storage kola eka den cover kata kala wage monawari prakash mokak kare deyak gahan ma tak gala amata penna kalin you write it down on a small piece of paper and you keep it on your study desk that is that is short term storage ियडियर long term storage is more permanent so that you can basically store it in a secure location and you can keep that to keep all your assets also known as we can also coin as digital assets eto kota etra dai wage okkom files ekak deyenne eka walata owner laata access karanna pulu so this short term and long term storage we have different types of uh, storage systems when it comes to cloud storage as well we'll go through it when we are tap- tapping into the cloud storage part so that we can go through it uh, in depth okay so that wrapped up for today so we'll catch back next week where we will be discussing the ict domains and the and uh, the impact on the society and introduction to the computers part so now guys uh, just to take you through this so now we are actually getting into the uh, interesting theory part so so far what we discussed was almost all the all the theory that was the largest theory module or the theory lesson in ICT now we are getting into the fun and uh, in interesting part where we will start from the introduction to computer then we'll get into data representation 
performance gaming performance cpu performance if at the touch karamu komoda adaganne kiyala so my goal as i told you guys before my goal is basically to teach you the big picture of ipp so that in the other day you guys can get into the it field and be of tech so thanks a lot for joining the class today and uh, this video will be uploaded to youtube in a while so you can again go through it as well and uh, feel free to check my other videos and uh, we'll keep in touch